All right, let's talk about October because October is not coming to play, you guys. This is a very, very big month. Literally, this is one of the biggest times of the year as we are entering into eclipse season. And I want to prepare you guys as much as possible because something that really has turned me off from astrology in 2022 is that there has been so much fear mongering. Just like we see everywhere else in the world constantly on the news, just everywhere, astrology I feel like has turned into that as well in a lot of ways and I was guilty of it too for a little while. Like it was just so easy to look at all of the really dramatic and big scary transits and be like, oh my god this is coming, watch out and your life is gonna fall apart this month basically, right? And I don't want to subscribe to that, I don't want to be a part of that anymore. I still want to be real. I'm not going to say I'm going to just only focus on the, the great things because polarity is a part of life. But if I can find the beauty in it, I'm going to try to give that to you because I myself know what it's like to like see scary things coming up and be like, oh my god, like what if this? What if that? Especially when you may already be in a place of like fear or you may already be in a place where you're nervous about those areas of life to see a Scorpio South Node Eclipse coming in that area, for example, may not be the most comforting if things in our lives aren't making us better and helping us evolve and helping us grow for always focused on the negative if it's just helping us to be in more fear or focused on the negative then it's really not fucking helpful at the end of the day point blank period right like it's one thing to be aware and all of that but if you live your life based on oh my god this is happening now this is going to happen now this is my day is going to be ruined because of this or this month is now going to be ruined because of this i just don't think that's helpful and i feel like there's a lot of fear mongering in astrology and that's just my opinion like take it or leave it you don't have to to agree with me and I used to do it so I, I get it like I know like not on purpose you know but it's very easy to be like oh my god and get wrapped up into the drama of this Scorpio south node solar eclipse that we have coming at the end of October and be like everybody's life is gonna fall apart there's gonna be a major crisis and this that and the other in your life and like yeah that definitely could happen like I'm not gonna lie that definitely could happen but there can be amazing things that come from this like it is a solar eclipse so it is a new a new energy that's coming in while also cleaning out an old energy right if we only focus on what's shitty about all of it and we don't like we don't pick the gold out of it we don't get the the growth of it the evolution of it then i feel like we're just you know scaring ourselves over and over and over again and that's unhealthy you know and i've gotten caught in that cycle in the past so that's why i'm saying this and it kind of turned me off from astrology for a long time because of those reasons and so i just wanted to make that clear really quick <laughs> with that being said let's talk about october because october is a very big month we are going to be entering into eclipse season at the the end of October. So the end of October and the beginning of October are two very different energies, right? We enter into October with Mercury going direct opposite Neptune. Because Mercury is going direct, it looks like we are finally getting clarity on some kind of higher uh, meaning. We are finally seeing through the bullshit. We are finally understanding how to balance out where we have been too over controlling in our lives, too focused on the small things that don't matter versus where we need to have faith more, where we need to let go more, where we need to not try to control things or be so neurotic about things, you know? And so this is starting like October starting out with like, I think a lot of clarity, a lot of mental breakthroughs, a lot of insights, really understanding the higher meaning or the higher purpose of something. This is really, really great for spiritual practices, for a higher spiritual understanding, right? And then we also have the Saturn Uranus square perfecting in the beginning of October, but we've already been feeling that. We've already been on the buildup of that. So this is definitely showing us, you know, where we need to break free of certain restrictions or certain limits in our lives 
or find some kind of balance between something that may feel like it's not working, something that may feel too unstable versus something that may feel more stable. And so we're kind of, we've been dealing with that for a few years, but this is the last and final square that we will have of this transit. So I predict it's more so of a turning point. It's more so of like a closure than it is like, you know, uh, some bam, wham, thank you, ma'am, you know, <laughs> like something like that. So we also have Pluto direct uh, on the 8th of October, which is really bringing in a powerful, profound shift in a forward momentum, forward direction. So we could have been examining, deeply examining something in our lives the past several months. And then as Pluto goes direct, that can be a very profound shift for a lot of people. There can be very deep, profound insights that are had. And so that first, you know, eight days of October is full of, I think, a lot of clarity, a lot of insight, a lot of powerful insight that we can use moving forward throughout the month. So then on the 9th, we have the Aries full moon, and I will be doing a separate video for each sign on this full moon. But this full moon is interesting. It's going to be basically almost conjunct Chiron. So it's really going to be showing us, you know, where we are in terms of other people. So what I mean by this is it's going to be showing us our individuality versus where we are in relationships. And so there may be something that we need to do for ourselves, or there may be something that is closed out that we had desired to do or actions that we took that are kind of, you know, the chapter is kind of closing uh, because of others or because of the relationship, because that Aries Libra dynamic is very much self or other. So an Aries full moon is like, okay, I'm going to do what I want and I'm going to you know, I'm going to do me instead of worrying about everybody else. And so it's kind of a break from this Libra and energy, but because Chiron is in the mix can also be kind of like a wounded energy that could come out an insecure energy, like a impulsive or fuck it kind of energy that ends up backfiring on us. So we do want to be careful, but I will talk more about that when we have that uh, Aries full moon that comes up on the 9th. Then Mercury will move back into Libra on the 10th and be retracing its steps that it just retrograded in. So more and more clarity will be had. We will notice a shift once Mercury moves back into Libra on the 10th because things will start making more and more sense in terms of our decisions, our relationships, our connections, and where we find that balance, peace, and harmony within our lives. And then on the 11th, we have Mars squaring Neptune. This is a really interesting energy because Mars is in Gemini, right? So it's all over the place. It's like here, there, and everywhere, bouncing off the walls, had way too much sugar or drink an adrenaline drink, right? And Mars is squaring Neptune and Pisces. <laughs> and so this can definitely be like, you know, we may be arguing facts that maybe we're not clear about, or we may be involved in, you know, we may be kind of pushing something that is not entirely clear. Uh, I also think of like lies or illusions that could come up with this. This would be great though for maybe like, you know, studying or getting curious about different topics that are spiritual or of higher, you know, higher woo woo stuff. Like it would be great for that. But do just watch out for this transit because not everything may be what it appear. It's not, I don't think it's anything super dramatic but things may not be what they appear to be or what we're thinking that they are. So there can be some illusion that's brought into this or something that's not entirely what it appears to be or what we think it is. So then on the 23rd, we have Saturn finally moving direct. And so we've been, you know, Saturn's been retrograde for the past several months. And so this will definitely be, you know, a forward shift in the sign of Aquarius, wherever we have Aquarius in our charts, you know, we've been reflecting on certain things that we've done to secure our stability to make sure that things are solid in a certain way. And so when Saturn moves forward, it can take these lessons and, and move forward. So then on the 23rd as well, we have Venus moving into Scorpio with the sun moving into Scorpio as well. So we will have a Venus Kazemi. And so there will be a massive shift from this Libra energy to the Scorpio energy, right? So we have this Libra energy that's very much about others and relationships. It is a darker energy though. You know, Libra is not all light 
fluffy, fun, and smiles, right? Like there is a darker energy. Libra believes in balance. There's a polarity there. It's right when the darkness starts coming back as we start having equal amount of day and night because of the equinox. And so there is this kind of darkness that is making its way as we are moving through fall and eventually into winter. And so we are learning how to kind of interact with the darker areas of life, right? With our, our darker sides, with the things that are maybe dark but beautiful, right? Libra starts showing us that there's beauty in the darkness there's beauty in all sides if we can find it and so then with venus and the sun moving into scorpio we then have this transition into the darker sides of life right into that darkness into the deeper emotional realms into the uh the transformational metamorphosis kinds of kind of energies right so we're going into the season where things start to die, where nature starts to die, where things start to shed. And so right after that, on the 25th, we have the solar eclipse in Scorpio and it's conjunct Venus. And this is a partial solar eclipse and it is a south node solar eclipse. So we have this energy of shedding for a new beginning, of letting go for a new beginning, and there will be Venus themes in the mix. So this will definitely likely deal with relationships, connections, beauty. It can definitely deal with money, finances, things like this, where we need to shed something to finally have some kind of new beginning, to finally set ourselves free from something, to finally merge out of some kind of darkness, right? So what I really think that this is like is it's it's very much of like, okay, if you wanna bring in the new, right? You can't do that with all of this old shit, right? Like you can't do that with all of this old shit. A way that I explained it earlier this year with the Scorpio lunar eclipse was, you know, if you have a house and you are trying to move into a, a nicer house, a better house, a new house, and you have storage closets full of shit, you know, that's like been, you know, rotted and, you know, like very scorpion, very scorpionic, right? Like growing mold or like, you know, just like, it's not, it's gross, right? You're not gonna take that to your new house, right? And so maybe even before you even think about getting a new house, maybe you need to purge that. Maybe you need to shed that, you know? Like, so what needs to be shed for us to start something new, right? Now this is a solar eclipse, so it is powerful, right? So this is a powerful, new beginning that may require an ending or may require us to emotionally purge or shed old blockages, old internal beliefs, old connections, old friendships, you know, old lack mentality beliefs that we've been holding on to. You know, Scorpio, the Scorpio South Zone is really showing us where we're attached to lack and scarcity within our lives. And this does not just have to be financially. This can be with our self-worth, our self-love, you know, anything, right? This can be with relationships, you know, where we tolerate relationships because we feel lack within ourselves. We don't feel like we're good enough. So we tolerate relationships that maybe we're not very deeply uh, passionate about or deeply committed to, you know, maybe we're tolerating a job that we're not deeply committed to, but there's, we feel lack and we feel like maybe I couldn't get the job that I really wanted, right? And so we attach to that and and we have fears around that. So this Scorpio solar eclipse is like, this is a beautiful time to face fears and to allow ourselves to move through those fears, to move through a purge, right? And so the end of October is very much about that, but I would recommend to find the beauty in it, right? Don't just look at, oh my God, everything's going to fall apart, right? Because I don't believe that that's the case, right? There, like we go through eclipses twice a year, basically. So there's no reason to basically, you know, not like 
not every single eclipse, our life is going to fall apart. Everybody's life is going to fall apart. You know, like I definitely have been through eclipses that have been uh, not that much happening, you know, and then I've been through other eclipses that, yeah, they have been life changing, but not every single eclipse is going to be life changing. Right. And it also depends on where you have Scorpio in your chart. Are your angles in Scorpio, you know, because those angles in Scorpio definitely can bring a little bit more um, life changing events. But it just all depends, right? But I would say that because this is a solar eclipse, I'd much rather this be a solar eclipse, like a blank slate that's forming, the creation of something that's happening, rather than a lunar eclipse, like we already had this year in the middle of May that was very rocky, right? So it all just depends, right? But I think that this is like, if you want this new beginning, there's something we have to walk through. There may be a fear we have to walk through. There may be something that we need to shed. Something needs to be purged within our lives first. And that is really what I think this Scorpio solar eclipse is going to be about. But I'm going to do a separate video on it as well when the time comes. So then on the 28th, we have beautiful news. Jupiter will retrograde back into Pisces from Aries. So it's finally leaving Aries and finishing its transit back into Pisces. Now, Jupiter was in Pisces from the very end of December last year in 2021 until I believe like April or May this year. Shit, I don't remember. Um, I think it was like April or May this year, Jupiter moved into uh, Aries. So this is amazing because Jupiter, that, that Jupiter and Pisces transit, even though it was my eighth house, was absolutely beautiful. And I wasn't exactly sure how it was all going to play out because it's a beautiful transit. Jupiter rules Pisces, right? But it was in my eighth house, which is kind of like a darker house. But it ended up playing out beautifully. Just And I think that's just the rulership, Jupiter being in its rulership, right? And it proved to me even more why traditional ancient astrology is the shit and Jupiter rules Pisces, not Neptune. Sorry. Anyway, Jupiter will move back into Pisces. So what we experienced in the beginning of this year and around spring with Jupiter and Pisces, like that is going to come back around, right? There were lessons that were taught in the beginning of this year with Jupiter and Pisces. And we may need to further integrate some things once Jupiter moves back in Pisces. But I am so excited for it because the beginning of this year was literally the best best energy I've felt in a long time, best energy we've had in a long time. So take advantage of that. When Jupiter moves back into Pisces on the 28th, it will not be back into Pisces for very long. It will go back into Aries like the end of November. So it's only going to spend like a month around like a little bit around like a month in Pisces. So keep that in mind. And then on the 29th, we will have Mercury in Scorpio. Mercury moving into Scorpio and finishing its transit through Libra, finishing its retrograde cycle. And so we will definitely see more information coming out, more things being revealed, right? Things coming up from the depths and coming to the surface, right? With Mercury and Scorpio. So, and then on the 30th, we will finally have the long awaited Mars retrograde in Gemini. And Mars has been in shadow now for a little while. It will be in Gemini for like until spring 2023. And so this is definitely going to be interesting wherever we have Gemini in our charts, Mars is going to retrograde there. So there's definitely going to be, you know, a, a backtracking happening with things that have went on. And that's why I also said, be careful around the 11th, that Mars square Neptune transit, and even the days leading up to the 11th, because that may not be what it appears. And once Mars goes retrograde, we're going to be like, oh, wait, hold on, why did I do that? Or you know, why was I thinking that, you know, so just be weary of that. So that is October. That is my version of October, my predictions of October. Hopefully you've got something from this that wasn't just like, oh shit, you know, like run in fear. Everything's about to fall apart because it's a Scorpio eclipse. Like, yeah, this can be a powerful energy. It can be a life-changing energy, but I don't think that you know, everyone's life is going to fall apart. And I think that there is going to be a beauty in this. Venus is going to be conjunct this eclipse. Now, Venus doesn't like to be in Scorpio. So, you know, but there's still going to be some Venusian qualities there. And the fact that it's a solar eclipse, so it's starting something uh, rather than a lunar eclipse, I think is 
I actually would prefer, you know? So definitely let me know what you think about this month down below. Where is uh, Libra and Scorpio in your chart? I'm also working on the October horoscope. So be on the lookout for those. And thank you guys so, so much for watching and supporting. As always, I truly, truly, truly appreciate it. And I will see you guys in my next video very, very soon.